I think the minute I stepped on our practice field for rugby, the calling happened. Uh, an eight-year plan to be on the team. And I was in it within two years. Don't wait until you are a pro to be a pro. Right. And I walk around with a rugby ball sometimes and they're like, what is this child on? It looks like it was a heavy hit. Yeah. It's up. It's not up. You know, that's the first time I played like professional. I'm making rugby money. How can I make money outside of it? And those two Scottish guys and I said, oh, you're, um, you're here for the movie. That rugby is a game for all shapes and sizes, all cultural um, aspects. And he looked at me and he says, you guys are awesome. Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another great episode of Rugby Swag. My name is Gift Time Bailu, and this is the show where we speak to people about the opportunities they found, created, or taken advantage of. On top of the news that is happening, I know, I know, it has been a long time. It's been almost five months since we've had a chance to talk, but you know what? The rugby season is back. We're talking about 15. We had a crazy summer, winter for me, because I live in Brazil. But you know, we had club rugby, we had rugby sevens, uh, 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 college rugby. Uh, we had everything happening, but you know what? We're back, and of course, we're coming back on the most important date for rugby in rugby lifetimes, the Rugby World Cup, which technically starts, if you guys are listening to this, Today would start tomorrow, but really, you're most likely listening to this on Friday, so it starts later on today. So, <laughs> depending on when you're listening to it, you know, you're catching it in. I don't know if you can see this. If you can't, you know, I got my Rugby World Cup picks already ready to go. Coming out of the group stage, we got, let me look at this over here, just in case, New Zealand, France, South Africa, Ireland out of Group B. I got Upsetters, Wales, and Fiji out of Group C. And my biggest upset out of Group D, Argentina and Samoa. All right, look, whenever these guys are now being able to go back to their countries and being able to play in the way that they're supposed to, games are going to be all different this time. But we're not going to talk Rugby World Cup on this one because uh, I'm going to have a little bit of a special show for that on Tuesday when we're back with just regular news. Uh, but... What we're going to try and do this year is going to be tough because there's a lot happening simultaneously is we're going to try and make Tuesdays news and information uh, podcast. So basically kind of update what's going on uh, and, and kind of keep everybody in track on track. And then on Thursdays, it'll be interview days. So there might be some Thursdays that there won't be a show, but we should be trying to get something just about every single Tuesday, give or take. So going to work my hardest uh, to make sure we got this going on. But uh, I'm excited to be back. I'm excited for the Rugby World Cup. Uh, but mostly, yo, I'm excited for this interview that we got coming in. Uh, look. He's, this is the second time he's been on the show. It had been a while. We actually did this a while ago, but we're just getting to it because it's now most prevalent. We got Dr. Freddie Henry Ajudwa on the show. Um, man, you know, you guys know him from Rugby ATL, now moved over to California. Uh, this man has been a uh, club sevens runner-up. He's been a champion. Uh, this man is known for his absolute beastness on the field, but most importantly for me, he is one of the leads for the U Nigeria rugby national team, uh, which they have their Olympic qualifiers in Zimbabwe coming up in two weeks, coming up the September 16th and 17th. So it's really important that we get this out because it is so crucial to what happened moving into the Olympics. Of course, we're in Rugby 15, Rugby World Cup time, but hey, man, look, this is when you get the inside scoop. This man has been a Life University grad. He is a doctor of chiropractic, and man, we got some information. This is a great talk, great discussion. Uh, great to see him again, and uh, of course, you guys are going to enjoy this. Please don't forget, if you're getting this, go ahead and subscribe in on YouTube at Gift Time Rugby. Or you can just go ahead and follow us on the podcast here. You see this, whether it's on wherever you saw it promoted first. If you already subscribed on, please tell your friends about it, all right? We want to bring it back. This is our pleasure, our special flavor of rugby, but... Most importantly, being able to keep you guys informed about what's going on on the low when everybody's talking about what's going on above. All right, so in the meantime, let's get it started. Dr. Freddie Henry Ajudwa. Check it out. What's up, everybody? Welcome to 
What's up, everybody? Welcome to another great episode, Rugby Swag. And of course, y'all got to realize we got a returning guest. It's been three years, two years, 2021, 2020. We were pandemic times. We were pandemic yep. times. All right. We we're talking about a man who was about to lead a country that decided to all of a sudden throw its whole governing body and throw off its whole Olympic bid in one fell swoop. All right. The man came from doing Life University. Now that man is a two time American rugby premiership champion. That man is a rugby ATL runner up. He also made it to the championship runner up as well, too. And officially, officially can finally say he is a member of the Nigerian Rugby uh, Football Federation and an Olympic potential going through. I'm talking about the doctor. Freddie Henry Ajudwa, my brother, welcome back onto the show. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, man. It has been some time, yo. It is uh, whew, so much has changed for uh, all of us in these last three years, but uh, you know, even for you specifically, we've got layers to this mess. I know Nigeria is where the biggest focus is right now, but uh, let's do a little bit of catch up on the full thing if we can, okay? Okay, all right, man. First and foremost, man, last time that we left off. Last time we left off, man, you had just stepped out from um, MLR uh, and you were finding your own way going through with tour camps. But now you are back with Rugby ATL. You've been there for two years now, right? Yeah. Two years. What happened? How's that been? How's it been back being back in MLR? So uh, basically, um, I took a step down because I felt like I was not ready for that competition. I mean, I recently just started playing rugby four years ago. So, I mean, playing one year and going to play professional rugby is insane, you know. Right. So, I needed to actually get my experience, play on the coach Blake Bradford, learn a lot about the game. And after I did that, the game slowed down so much that it was just a given for me to get picked up by Rugby ATL. No, nah, it makes sense. You know, you played with a number of teams, uh, namely one of the ones that stand out, Har uh, Hartford Harpooners, uh, my guy, Mark Diaz, one of your coaches. You know, what was some of the um, what was some of the effects of being able to play for these touring squads over the last few years, helping your development? Honestly, like with me, I just want to play rugby. Any rugby I can, I, I just wanted to play because I felt like I had a lot of years to catch up to all the guys who've been playing for so long. So Mark Diaz played a huge role in my development because he always gave me great opportunities to actually go out there and just ball without, you know what I'm saying, telling me what to do. He just, he just tell me, Fred, just be you, express yourself. I mean, that's the best environment that I feel like I could actually, you know, learn and, you know, replicate all the things that I want to do in the rugby field. Yeah. Uh, Marcus Satava also gave me a chance to play at a free tail service, I think. That's the only time I actually put on the hot put in his jersey. And we ended up winning that tournament, too, because we had a really strong side. So I've been these experiences have been so great for my career so far. Like, it's, I feel like it's what has made me who I am. And I think I'm only going to keep getting better and keep, you know, learning the game. Because the older you get in this game, the better you are because you, are, you get really smart. That IQ goes up differently, and it just makes the game not just easier, but it lets you be able to save your body better because you're able to now understand what you need to uh, do to be able to transition as opposed to, you know, we're pounding yeah. the rock constantly, yeah. constantly. Yeah. yeah, You know, obviously you've gained over this time the name Dr. Boom as well, too. You know, how has that been kind of seeing your 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 star slowly rise more and more within this element and now more people wanting to bring you in uh, as opposed to just kind of like the football guy that became rugby and now actually being the rugby guy who is now excelling? So, this, I mean, the three years really played a big role. I mean, when I first started, yeah, I was looked at a uh, very physical football player. You know, he carries the ball hard. But now I could pass. <laughs> I could pass. <laughs> That's I could, a big one right there. That's a big one. I could pass. I could kick. I could do everything, everything you could do in the rugby field, I could do. So, I mean, I'm considered as a rugby player now. I mean, I understand. I mean, people still think some coaches might still have their reservations about me as a player, but – Put me on the field, I'm always stand out. It is what it is. Yeah. Oh, man, I love that. I love it. Now, you know, you, you return back to rugby ATL ATL. Now I have to say, you know, Atlanta is not my favorite place in the world. You know, 
<laughs> Why? As a, Louisiana, Why? as a Louisiana person, I, I truly consider them the copycat to the original New Orleans. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You could so, say that. So my slander has been great for Atlanta, but it is a healthy respect. It's a respectable hatred as opposed to a personal one. So, yeah. you know, doing it as you guys consistently keep pushing up on my New Orleans gold. You know, how's it been now being in the NLR and uh, kind of with the guys that you've been working with? Because ATL, when he came in, you had a really secure coach, um, you know, really legend in the game who's now working with the USA Rugby men's and developing that program. Yeah. And now you guys have kind of had an, a, a shift over and you, you guys are kind of transitioning into a new position for you. Like, what's this? How's this MLR experience been now? The experience has been great. I mean, you get to travel, you get to play like competition, play against guys that have been playing for 14 years. And it's just like every day you fighting for positions, fighting for game time on the field or training. And it's, the environment is just very, it's very good because each person is getting you better. Right. Because I mean, you know how sometimes you're in an environment where you're better than everybody else. Yeah. This is not the issue. It's like this man is good. This man is good. That man is good. You get to learn from each and every one. Not even just the forwards, because I'm a forward. Right. Not even just the forwards. You learn from the back too, because back to tell you oh, this is the line you need to run right here beside me. It's just so much that goes on in the MLR system that a lot of people from the outside in don't see. Yo, you playing off the flank now, right? Yeah. I, um. Weak side, flanker. We, so what was that transition from being? Because primarily, you came in as basically as a um, as as a center wing early a lock. on. A lock. And then I was a lock. You were always as lock. Okay, I thought you had been positioned as center wing. So even now, moving from lock going out to the flanker, yo, how's that transition been? Because that's just a a much freer element, but the responsibilities kind of extend themselves because you have that freedom. Yeah, so I mean, basically, it, it was not too hard because the, my last ARP season, I played um, what they call a flanker. Right. So it helped me get prepared for the MLR season. I mean, I think that's probably the best season I've had so far when it comes yep. to rugby. So coming to the MLR, it wasn't too hard of a transition because I was already doing everything, and I, we had the same coach too. So right. it was just more like, just go do what you do, Fred. Make big hits, chase down the ball, carry hard, jump in the lineups, you know, just the regular forward stuff. Right. Yeah. So it wasn't it wasn't too hard at all. Oh. The only thing I'll say though is the fitness is a little different from club <laughs> rugby. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh wait, we gotta keep running. Yeah. It is not that like, when I can just coast. <laughs> yeah, the fitness is a little different from club rugby and pro rugby, but I mean after you train for like two to four weeks, you get used to it. It kicks in. It yeah. kicks in. Dude, what 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 has it been? Especially, let's kind of compare it even to your football career. You know, obviously you went from NCC, and I remember you talked about you literally just came on initially to just do kicking. They put you in at linebacker. You started doing your stuff. Then obviously we know about the Jacksonville Jaguars, but that was always a process and a transition. Yeah. Now that you've shifted over to rugby, comparing those two processes, like do they feel similar to you, or has it been like? a different kind of jump whenever you had to do football to rugby versus soccer to football? Honestly, I would say that the jump from football to rugby was, was tough. It was a tough transition. I would say that because as a football player, we work different muscle groups right. at different engine systems. Like right. with rugby, it's like I had to change my whole being to be able to keep up with these guys just because – I was fast. I mean, right. that you can't take from me. A lot of football players are fast. Facts. A lot of football players are physical. Right. But when it comes to continuity, be able yeah. to do that sprint over and over and over and over again, that was the difference right there. I struggled my first two years playing rugby, but I feel like if you keep to it, a lot of football players tend to quit. Yeah. After, yeah, because they feel like they cannot really break through. But if you keep through it, you usually break through. The body is made to change. Like, that's just, we are made to adapt to our environments. And True. it's just what it is. It's not really been, after that, it's just been okay. Soccer to football was easy because I did more running in soccer than I had to do less running in football. Like, football, I felt like I could have played two different positions, offensively, but they didn't let me. 
<laughs> They're like, sir, 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 we are trying to make sure we get our scholarships all filled up correctly. Yeah. All right, please stop taking it away from other players. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I wanted to do, but they didn't let me. But now that I'm playing rugby, I get to score a try and hit people. Best of both worlds, man. Man, that's what's up. You know, I, I love that because of the fact that, you know, I've always consistently said the theory that, uh, not to say that it's wrong, but the theory that one must absolutely start playing rugby at like five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years old to be able to be uh, functional within rugby at a later time. I think it's always been a bit of a false nom a nomer, only because of the fact that in sport, athleticism at intellect can be transferable. And like you said, your body's built to evolve. You yeah. know, accordingly. Mind you, there's like habits and shifts that you gain early on that makes it make sense. But I think it's also really dangerous to always put a kid into one sport for the rest of their life without being able to introduce them into other pieces oh, where those skills can be that's tra true. transferable. That's true. I started with track. So, I mean, that was the foundation of my, just everything. I used to run the 100 four by one, four by two. I did long jump sometimes, high jump. Did the shot put. So I did all of that. When Built was, all that speed. It, it was yeah. like in, initially building that speed early, and then you're just building now the functional tools that go along with it uh, yeah. as you keep going from sport to sport. Yeah. Uh, that makes the most sense. Dude, a, as you've now become an official Life University graduate, doctor of physical therapy, you know, has the knowledge that you've taken from that process, have you been able to find ways to directly input it into your development uh, now with MLR and, and your rugby development? I'm a doctor of chiropractic, not physical. Doctor of chiropractic. I used to apologize. Yeah, it's I okay. apologize. It's okay. My it's bad okay. to all. all. <laughs> it's, okay. it's okay. It's okay. But yeah, I mean, everything I feel like is discipline. If you if you could cultivate a habit of discipline, I feel like you will be able to accomplish anything. Everybody mm -hmm. asks me, how were you able to play at a, such a high level in um, chiropractic school and still graduate? It's it's discipline and focus on the things that you really want. Once you're able to just circle out what you really want in life and you put your mind into it and you pray every day, Work. it's nothing that you can accomplish. So it's been able to help me with my MLR career in a way where I wake up early in the morning. Right. I'm in the gym before everybody else. Just just out my, I've been built. I'm always working when everybody's sleeping. That's right. another one. So it's just... It's just what has helped me be able to keep up with this, this MLR play so far. Have you been able to maintain your own rest? Because I know we always got a little bit of that hustle, especially because we're Nigerians. We always have that hustle culture inside of us. We got to push, we got to push, we got to push. And sometimes our rest can be the sacrificial lamb to our ambition and success. How have you been able to find ways? And again, being in D.C. Uh, school, I know that rest gets even that much more emphasized as yeah. a requirement for recovery. So have you been able to find ways to be able to still fill the time and be productive while also maintaining your ability to recover? I have a bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> I have a bedtime. I go to sleep late at 10 o'clock. You call me or text me by that time, you're not getting a response. So it's just what it is. I mean, it just depends. Sometimes if I'm taking exams, and maybe I stay up a little later, but on a regular day, I throughout the season, I went to sleep at like nine, ten o'clock. So I yeah. before my body be able to, to recover because it was a long season, twenty two weeks. Dude, that 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 is a grind. No yeah. matter what anybody says, that is a grind. And especially yeah. whenever you only had what, like one, maybe two off weeks yeah, in that entire bad. time. Mm -hmm. That's 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 a wild to be able yeah. to. And you're doing that in Atlanta humidity. <laughs> Some days practices are really hard, man. When it's burning and the turf is burning under you, Whew. you know you're in Atlanta. Yo, yeah. this is where you go. Like, okay, guys, let's 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 go do some business up in Toronto. It's it's cooler <laughs> up there, yo. We, this this should be nothing game at this point, yo. For real, for real, yeah. Oh, bro, I love it. Like, and you know, that's what I was saying. Like, over this process, and you, obviously, we we follow each other on IG. And man, I always appreciate you seeing stories and always like watching your progress over time. Um, you know, how has it been even with the family in Nigeria, with Nigeria, the, your dad and your brothers and everything like that, like their progress of now watching you into this next phase? Because last time we talked, we're early on, you're coming off from the pro tryouts and dealing with your agents and stuff like that and just yeah. transitioning over here. 
now that you've gotten a solid four years, five years under your belt now, um, what has that been for your family and their now expectations of your performance? So with my family, they really thought that rugby was leisure for me at first. Really? Yeah. You know how African families are, man. <laughs> They thought they thought rugby was just a leisure sport. It wasn't really like a important sport. Even right. now that I'm playing with MLR, just because of how much I get paid, they really yeah. don't. They don't really look at it as a, you know, a professional sport. You right. Know? They're yeah. always like, "When are you gonna start working as a doctor? We need you to start working as a doctor. <laughs> make some money." But but now that I've really like went and played for Nigeria, had a nice out in you know. Cause this is my third interview today, believe it yeah. or not. Yeah, I, I know. Look, man, you you're doing yeah. the PR story. Honestly, you are doing the thing that I have always said that everybody in rugby needs to be doing more. It's can you talk? Can you talk? Can you talk? Because you need to be able to see your presence on multiple places on the platform. Because that's how people start to actually connect to the game and not the game back to the person. It it is. We know sports. Sports yeah. has always been. I like a player. That player played for either my favorite team or that team becomes my favorite because of that player. And I dive in because I want to follow that person more. Yeah. More. yeah. So, I mean, there's been, it's been big. My dad and my mom, they've been really proud of me so far because I mean, I always wanted to play in some type of form for Nigeria. That's yeah. always, always been my goal since I was five. Yeah. So when this happened, I mean, I was on that plane of Mauritius and tears was coming down my eyes just because it's like, yo, I'm really doing this. This is wow. something that I've been talking about for years and years. And yeah. if you know, if you know any of my really close friends, they'll tell you. And now they happened. It's like, God is real. God is good. God Amen. is real and God is good. That's what I was saying, man. Man, that is that is truth. You know, I, I wanted to hit on this because I think sometimes. You know, we, we whenever it comes to dealing with our faith, um, it's very easy to get like in this weird middle ground because we hear so many people talk faith and do levels of hypocrisy that seem to counter to it to the faith while simultaneously wanting to be able to present it and be a, a pr great example of what it is to be of our faith for you because of this process and I, i'm going to talk we talk, start talking about the nigeria stuff because that's where they really got chaotic uh, yeah. you know you know how has your how has your faith been affected by this process um since you've been doing this because again I mean, a lot has happened over these last few years yeah i mean my faith has been especially the first time when i left the uh, mlr team yeah it was uh it was a tough time but i feel like it was something that needed to happen mm -hmm. i prayed i mean i'm never god ask god why about you know certain questions about you know especially about life i just let it roll over but that right there made me realize that without god you're nothing you yeah. know and the two years where I, I did some unreal stuff man like especially with life unreal then coming to play for the atl side Playing the most games I ever played in a uh, you know MLR season, it's been it's been really emotional for me, and I feel like God has been on my side the whole time. Even when I feel like He was not there, He was there. So I don't think my faith was really affected much when it came to the things that were supposed to happen because I always believed that it was gonna happen. Right. So, so yeah, you know. But it was like, I know for me, I have these moments where, um, you know, stuff just goes down. And it's it's not a factor that the faith maybe even gets negated, but you're just like, when? When does this happen? I, I don't, I know there's a light at the end of the tunnel. I just don't see it exactly through all these walls that keep coming up in my way. And so whenever you get out, when I've gotten out of those, these moments, even more recently, start seeing the moments and you're just like, all right, this is, this is another reminder. And sometimes it's just like the constant reminder. And it just, it's like, I need to, let me dive deeper into this element here. This, 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 let me, let me dive deeper into my relationship with, with God, with Christ to be able to, you know, remember and not keep forgetting that there is a plan along. I'm just here to traverse the journey, but there is a, a pathway that's been presented to me. 
Yeah, that is true. I mean, it was times where I had to, you know, go indoors, lock the doors two, three days, no food, no water, just pray. A lot of people don't understand that those type of sacrifices have to be made to actually for you to, to accomplish the things that you need to accomplish, you know? Stuff that me and my dad and my mom does, like, at the end of every year before the, the new year comes around, we're going to three days, no water, no food, and just pray. Word. Word. No, man, that's legit. That's legit. So, you know, I, I love that. So let's transition into what happened with Nigeria. All right. We entered in 20. This is 2021. We're getting ready for qualifiers to go to Rugby Afrique, start doing the qualifiers. And within, what was it? Only like within a week of whenever the qualifiers were about to happen, the announcement gets made. Nigeria has been suspended from world rugby uh, and no longer is considered having a governing body and is no longer eligible for the qualifiers for the Olympics for 2020, 2021, uh, technically 2021. Um, for you, you had been building up and a lot, you, we'd been, they've been building up the, the silo almost around you as a future person to be part of this. For you in that moment, what happened for you? What was what was your reaction whenever you heard the news? So I heard it before the, the news came out. And oh, wow. uh, yeah, yeah. Because me and the general manager like this, we're really cool. So yeah. Aziz, Mr. Aziz Oladipo, that's my that's my man. So he called me, he told me, like, look, so they had an old um what they call it, president. Mm -hmm. ended up not doing well and you know, messing up the whole like rugby was like basically the the last sport that Nigeria is going to pick up to, you know, sponsor. And, and even when we got money, they never used the money for rugby, you know. You know how it goes with the yeah, crap. Yeah. You know? So that happened. The guy got fired, left office. We took the L by getting suspended. Stayed down, talked to Aziz almost every day. Like, every day we, we spoke. He's like, yeah, man, we working really hard to get the suspension lifted. But we got a lot of things that we need to work on before then. And I was just like, so what we need? And he was just like, we're probably going to need a new coach, a new president. So he did all the work. Honestly, he's been great for Nigerian rugby. He ended up getting a new election. We got a better president in there now that actually yep. cares about rugby. Yep. We got Stephen Lewis as our coach, the lizard, the legend. Wild. They were just that like, crazy. So it was when I saw when Stephen Lewis got – Appointed, I was just like, let's go. You're right. Let's go. Right. This is what we've been needing. And then the, they announced the squad for Mauritius. And I, I didn't know any of these kids, honestly. I probably knew maybe one or two of them because I knew Declan. Declan, mm -hmm. the top try scorer for the tournament. Yep. And I knew um, the other kid that played 10, the playmaker. Uh I'm sorry, Alex. Alex. Yeah. That's yeah, I know him too. Me and him, we've been talking just like in 2021 when everything was supposed to happen. I was excited. I'm for it. I was excited to meet them, but it didn't happen. And then when we, this whole t um, thing happened, Stephen Lewis is calling my coach every day, like, you got to release because it was a thing, like, because now I'm an international player in MLR. Right. So he was calling, like, every day, yo, we need Fred to come play. We need him. We need him. Like so, every day the coach come to me and be and like, "Of course, Stephen knows he's got the eye for talent. He's been doing it. Is with Jamaica done with so many people? Yeah, you know, yeah. most notorious with rugby, rugby New York, but still, yeah, yeah. He was just like the coach came to me here and like um, my other coach Steve. He came to me and he was like, um, "So I'm going to release you to go play for Nigeria, but just know that it's going to make you an international player." And it uh, doesn't guarantee you're going to have a contract with us next year. But I think that you should go out there and represent your country. And I was like, I appreciate you. I was happy. Like, once I said that, they bought my ticket the same day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, it was, it was crazy. So then I was, you know, my mind, I was I was excited for uh, Mauritius. I mean, like, you know, the season for ATL didn't go too well this, right. this year. Cause you know it's a rebuilding year, you know of everything like system. and literally everything. You, you guys are the whole organization is building from the bottom up again. Yeah, yeah. yeah they've got new colors, you know. It's it's yeah, it's been yeah, crazy. yeah. <laughs> yeah but, We're not but, gonna pretend that I haven't made that the butt of so many of my jokes. <laughs> again, respectable hatred. It's respectable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, um, and then 
we we flew out to um, we had training camp in london for two right. day, for two days mm -hmm. and there's i was i was the first one to arrive to the field so you know i was just you know playing around with the ball i didn't meet any of the players yet yeah. and then slowly the players started trickling in because they like all they're from london people. area i know there was like it was basically what was it uh nine london one u.s and two from nigeria itself yep, yep. Yeah. Yep, so they started trickling in and I just started seeing like the caliber of guys that were coming in. I was just like, okay, yeah, this might be uh, a legit. good team, legit team. So training started, we started passing the ball around because this one, you know, if somebody's really like you know good at uh, playing and everybody was spot on, it was just like a, it was like an instant click, if you mm -hmm. get what I mean. Like yeah. it was not no, oh, so you have to do this and you have to do that. Like Stephen Lewis didn't have to do none of that, he just told us. You know your players, play at your best, and make Nigeria proud. So let me ask this. You know, you, you talked about this a little bit before with getting the MLR stuff. But now you've started to feel – have you started to feel where you're like, I can just play my position as opposed to trying to look out for everybody else's and just make – adjust to that? So I feel like it depends on the team I'm playing on. If I'm right. playing on a team where I'm like one of the best players, then yeah. But in this team, I just had to do my job. That's it was crazy. not no like, oh, I have to go run 70 meters and score a try. That's not my job. I'm not a winger. I play right. prop in uh, seven. So my job is to run hard lines. You know, if you break, you break. You make your tackles, yep. scrum, and win lineups. Yep. That's my job. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I didn't have to do the extra stuff. So that was, that was when I knew that we had something special. And the group of guys that we took so we went down there trained um two we had two trainings mm -hmm. one on monday i think one two on tuesday we had one in the morning and then we had one in the evening we had like a little scrimmage against another team that came in yeah to just check our skills and everything was looking sharp everything was looking clean so we fly out to mauritius had a little team bonding went for dinner at the patio in england that's yeah. a really nice spot. She really treated us nice. We ate really good before we got on the flight. So we flew in, got to Mauritius. So you know the whole thing. This was like, we didn't know it was going to happen. The tournament was like, the Nigerian government didn't know it was going to happen because we didn't know if we we're going to get the funding, you know, you right. know how it happened. So we come out there with the kit that we have. Everybody was not matching kit, but we had kit. Kit. You, you had, had something. You had something. Had there, there's a representation yeah. somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had something. <laughs> So we arrived and all these teams are coming in. Ivory Coast, Ghana, everybody was fresh. We like matching kit looking, you know, nice and spot on. And you could just tell them looking at us like. Let good. me ask this. Let me ask this because I, I've constantly said that, you know, Rugby Afrique has been a very grotesquely underestimated area. I, rem uh, I remember specifically a couple of years ago, whenever I was watching, I think, the Gold Cup. Mm -hmm. And I saw Uganda and uh, Madagascar were way more talented than I had ever expected them to be. Like, I was like, hold up, time out, whoa, whoa, whoa. Are they good? Am, am I looking at this? I'm, are they good? Because typically we only hear whenever it comes to coming out of Rugby Afrique, you get basically three countries, Kenya, Namibia, and then South right. Africa. Mm -hmm. Though South Africa is kind of just like this isolated, independent, where everybody just, we're already assuming you're the best. We're not yeah. going to think anything of it. And then Namibia and Kenya end up being the ones that represent almost consistently. But then to find out, like, you got Uganda, who is remarkably fast, a really long group of guys. Um, and then you had, um, obviously, like, Madagascar. I know they didn't play in this one, but I talked to a guy um, at, at a trade show this uh, last week and from Madagascar, and he was like, yeah, Madagascar actually has rugby as a forefront uh, opposed to soccer than most people realize. Uh, because I guess whenever the French came in, they brought the rugby along with them. Mm -hmm. And it just it matriculated a lot stronger in the country. But again, we don't hear about them because we don't see them on HSBC circuits. We don't really hear anything about international tournaments. And probably funding is a big component mm -hmm. of that, which mm -hmm. is always, always our backtracking uh, issue. But the fact that we had these countries, and then let's not even take away Ivory Coast and Ghana and, and yeah, everybody I mean, else who's been part of this process. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. for you, you know, entering into it, can you tell me what you were expecting before you started versus what it was once you started playing? I mean, I honestly expected good players. Yeah, Africa. 
there's going to be fast guys. There's going to be strong guys. I know we're going to be physical. I know exactly what we're going to expect. But then the one thing I didn't expect is the way we played. Mm. I, I knew we were a good team, but I didn't think that we were that good. Look, there's one thing that I, I, I've heard so consistently. London Nigerians. That team, I know it's kind of shifted a little bit bit by bit. But the London Nigerians are like a legendary grouping team that has been just doing damage in the club rugby scene in, in England for so long. Um, but never had a chance to really watch them from an international standpoint because, you know, it just wasn't there yet. You know, yeah. when the moments came, it wasn't there yet. So, you know, kind of to speak to what you guys were doing, please continue. I just want to. So it was just like, wow. We play our first game, I think it was against. Ghana was Ghana. our first game. Which was great. Man, <laughs> when I tell you I saw that score, I was like, <laughs> yes, Lord. All right, we are not going to be subservient to these Ghanaians. <laughs> no, for real. I mean, they had a few guys that brought from overseas. They got like maybe like three or four guys, maybe six four guys. guys. They brought yeah. But the way the boys stood up to that game, we knew that winning that game was going to determine how far we went in that tournament. Yeah. We beat Ghana. Convincingly, because this the try they scored, we gave it to them. But we beat them convincingly. Defense was strong. We just have flyers on the team. Like this dude we call Super K, Super Color yeah. Oh my goodness, man. Wheels. Wheels for days. And then you have Declan on the other side. So these are two wings moving. Way too fast. Like fastest guys that I've really seen in a rugby pitch before. Colin Oz are fast, but that guys. was like that. <laughs> Look, again, as you said. The country and its diaspora has so much talent. It is one of those aspects of rugby where we've constantly worked. Yo, you need to remember that you got to focus on the idea of the person and not so much leverage into like the concept of what is a rugby player that you take away from being able to spot talent that can maximize your game both on and off the field. Because even taught hearing those guys, they seem like genuinely good guys. Great like guy. just genuinely good guys who are really, really talented and watching them play legitimately talented people. And you wouldn't see, and you ask, yo, why aren't you playing for England? Like, why aren't you playing for RFU? How are you, how are you not playing for Wales or somebody like that? What's being missing? How are you not part of premier, premier 15? Like, yeah. this is where it goes. Like, what is it that you are missing in this process that you are not taking advantage? And now Nigeria has an opportunity to be able to, Help. Maximize that level. Yep, yep. So just watching those guys is tear up. They were just and then the kid we brought from Nigeria, Gabriel. Yeah, hot stepper, hot stepper. It's like step step people, like step people, step brother step. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> so like I'm like, yo, like and we had OGs like on Jato came in, brought his experience, you know, scored a few tries. So like it was just talent everywhere. My Lube. Just everybody was just good, and we just worked with each other's like strength and like weaknesses. So we yeah. made sure that we were able to like just because we didn't practice a lot, right? We were able to like just cement what we had and just made the best of it. Which I loved the best on that. I love that there was this pre qualifier for that because I think one of the worst things that would have happened is if you guys had had to go to a qualifier like Zimbabwe first. And just being like all the pressure is for you to perform at this qualifier so that you can get to the Olympics. And it would have changed the way that you guys had time to gel. Of course, winning this was important because you need to get that top two seed to be able to move on automatically. Mm -hmm. But the fact that it gave you guys time to not only gel, but to be able to see who everybody is, especially considering the short amount of time to practice. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean. It was it was great. Then we played Congo, blew them out, played, I think, um, Botswana, blew them yeah. out, played. Ivory Coast was a tough game, but went good. We won that one also. And then Algeria was a team. They were, they were a very – they've been playing together since 2008. And also they were like – none of them were top 14. <laughs> uh, what? For real? <laughs> Oh shoot! So I see this was part of the thing I was wondering about. I was like, "What the heck? How, what's going on with Algeria?" I was like, "Yo, yo, yo! <laughs> Wait, I don't think I've ever heard Algeria have a national team that was like powerful like this. Like, is is Northern Africa like really balling like that? But it makes sense again that French component of it. Mm -hmm. But even still, to have 
I want that many guys being able to be in top 14. Top 14. Is nuts. It's crazy. I was just like, if one of the dudes that scored uh, the trial on us in the corner, I Googled him. I was just like, he's like a ball of ball in the top 14. Like, so ball. tell me, okay, so <laughs> of the competitions, that would, let's arguably say this might be one of the most um, experienced level of competition that you've had in terms of like young and 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 uh, uh, um, impactful now because MLR, it's a lot of guys who have played for a long time and they might be retired and moving into MLR, so they had experience and knowledge. But from a speed and uh, skill best standpoint, team, best team I played on hands down. So, what was it that stood out to what? What was it about them that stood out to you that seemed to make them so proficient? Honestly, I feel like it was just the more of like, oh, you, my brother. They were playing for the country. Right. That was all of it. It was just more about pride at the end of the day. And we did everything we did do to represent the country well. Because if we came out to that tournament and had a bad outing, it would just look bad. Like, yeah. we, we've been out for so long, and we they give us a chance, basically, to come out and do this, and then we mess it up. Right. We had but it doesn't even mess up, because that's a really talent. That's a, an Algerian team that has been playing together for so long. So, yeah, I mean... We basically, I feel like we needed more time of training to play yeah. a team, a team like Algeria. Yeah. So hopefully we're planning to do a longer training camp this time before the tournament, maybe like a week or a week and a half, get right. like six or seven practices together. Yeah. I think we do that. We're going to shock a lot of teams in this tournament coming up. A lot of yeah. teams that you think is like a top team, top dogs. This Nigerian team got something like it's something special going on right now, bro. Like, I just don't know how to just explain it. The vibes is great. There was no egos. There was no, you know, it's just, just love, man. Love and understanding of why you were there. You're here to represent the country and people that want to do this. People that want to be in your shoes. Maybe two years, three years from now, they're gonna be watching. Right. So, what are you gonna put on the board? For the next generation, that's what we're just thinking about. I mean, it's a couple guys that I know, like they're on the way out. Like with me, I'm not going to be playing for so much longer. Right. It's some younger guys on the team. Guys are like 22, 21, 23, getting ready. Yeah, the trajectory going up. Yeah. So it's just it was it was just a good mix, and Stephen Lewis just made it a lot better. Good Can you tell me a little bit about like seven Stephen Lewis's style? Because again, this is a man that has been really successful. And I'm going to say particularly within diaspora teams. And I think that's really important because, you know, when it comes to dealing with culture, diaspora, whether it's Caribbean diaspora, whether it's African diaspora, you mm -hmm. know, there's an entry into the culture that you have to be able to be willing to accept and be able to be open to as much as be able to implement yourself in. So for you, from your perspective, what was Stephen Lewis's style like and, and why do you think it fits with you guys? Honestly, he was just a good coach, and he cared about the players, too. That's one. Two, he basically saw the team, just from experience, saw the team he was working with and made decisions. Basically, it was just like, okay, this is what we're going to do. Everybody's going to play, start three games. Everybody started three games. Some mm -hmm. people rested. Some people played more times, but everybody got game time. Nobody complained and said they didn't get enough game time in the nice. hotel. That's one. Two, he was very considerate about like people's beliefs and like the way they play. You know how like you might be a speed star and but they want you to play in the middle of the field. Mm, yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. So he was the one to be like, okay, so you you fast, you fast, you're gonna be our two wingers. We got two strong ball carriers. This is what you do. He came to me before the tournament. He was like, Fred, you know what I want you to do? I want you to be a menace. I want you to carry hard, and I want you to hit people. That's your job in this tournament. All flows and passes, if it's there, do it. But that's not your job in this tournament. I want you to be a forward, a fearsome forward that all this other team is going to be talking about the whole weekend. And I guess he had that same conversation with everybody else, too. So he knew exactly what he was coming to. I mean, he did say that we would beat Jamaica if we played against Jamaica. <laughs> 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 Yo, oh, 
It is <laughs> on. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. We Jamaica if we played against them. So that that made me feel good because you know Jamaica has been on the on the rise lately. They've been on the rise. No, it's true story. Yeah, it's true story. Man, see, I, I love that. You know, it, it's been my and it will be eventually my personal dream to be able to put a diaspora rugby world cup into position where we can see uh these countries from the continent, from the Caribbean, from the US, from Brazil, and be able to see how we can all compete together because I think that's part of the the rise of not just the rugby, but the culture itself and being able to see our different positionings and perceptions of the culture through this telescope of rugby. Uh, yeah. And then be able to show the world, like, okay, like, this is what it is. Not just all athletes that are just mindless athletes going, but, like, thinking grown men and women really showing out and showing that this is an entertaining and impactful game simultaneously. Yeah. I mean, the plan is to actually grow the sport in Nigeria, like, have it in secondary schools and primary schools. Yeah. So they start playing from young because, like, the guy, Gabriel, he's been playing for a long time. And you could tell yeah. that he could play rugby like it's just certain guys where you know i mean they come from a smaller country and everybody doubt them but with him he just fit right in that was our missing key because he was not he didn't come to the england on um, training camp oh wow so he was yeah. the fact that he was able to fit in speaks of volumes again to the team the coaching and what you guys were already having for him to just be like okay i can put my place and still be impactful yep he was the missing key like after the training i was like yeah, i just still felt like something was missing when him and uh, owner jato came in there was the two people who were missing. We were just missing that one good playmaker. Like, he's not scared to get hit and, you know, yeah. get the ball out while he's getting hit. So he gave, like, four or five tries in that tournament squad, maybe two. But he was more like a, you know, playmaker. We had, like, two or three of them. Matt Luber was a good one, too. He gave me my try, so <laughs> it was it was nice. <laughs> Yo, did you hear anything back when, on WhatsApp from uh, family in Lagos and everything like that? It was going crazy, man. Like, what? It was nuts. Like, my people, like the Delta State, they've been, I've been doing interviews with TV stations, radio stations. Yeah, it's been, it's been great, man. I feel like it's something that I really needed to do in my, my career in sports. Man. Represent the country and make the country proud. Because now you're not playing for for you no more. You're playing for 200 million people. Yes. Look, man, there's something to say. Look, what is it? Six most populous country in the world. Yeah. That's that's a legitimate move. And that's in country. We're not even speaking about the people outside uh, in the other diaspora areas, the U.S. and England and Russia and Croatia and all the places that everywhere, we're all over. We're everywhere. We're everywhere. We're, uh, <laughs> We everywhere, everywhere, man. It's crazy. Like three Nigerians were in Mauritius, living in there with families and stuff. Kids really? Were, yes, man. Everywhere. Mm -hmm. Bruh. I mean, see, and that's you know, like I said, like Nigeria. I have. It has never made sense why it hadn't been more key. I know, obviously, we soccer love is soccer love, and that's you know, it's never going to be replaced. It's just obsessive in that point. Yeah. But it never made sense as to why it had not been able to develop stronger in in something like rugby where i think we're one of those few countries where the physicality matches to our personality uh from uh, across across the countryside you know yeah. i think there's other countries where they're a little bit more passive mm -hmm. so one because they don't have the population two just passivity so it doesn't necessarily make sense for them to be more powered in in this sport or not but yeah. for us Come on. <laughs> this Nigeria, is the number right there. And now you got the youth. <laughs> like mo most of the country in Nigeria. So, what is it? 60%, 70% of the country is under 40 years old. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's going to be a problem, man. We just we just keep this going. Qualify for the Olympics. That's going to be the, that's going to be what we need right there. We do that. We're going to be ranked top five in the, in the, in the continent of Africa. And then we go from there. Because right now we're building. I feel like Nigeria, they be, I mean, they had rugby back in the day, but not like this. Man. It's not the same. It's not as acute. It wasn't as, uh, you, you didn't have an ability to be able to uh, connect with the people from across the way and really pull from from all the sources and yeah. let alone be able to develop in, in, in country itself. So now that you guys, you, you've gotten past Mauritius, you know, you, you've really gotten back to feel of of at least uh um qualifier international rugby too yeah. and before i go into that there was conversations that you were thinking about 
maybe playing for the U.S. at one point after this whole Nigeria stuff had done. That was that yeah. true? Yeah, because uh, I you remember the camp I went to with the USA. I think yes. USA South camp. I went down there. A bunch of the guys there play for the U.S. now. So yeah. was like, I was in the little you know little pipeline <clears throat> right. to to do it. But then <clears throat> Nigeria was just. Nigeria has my heart, man. That's what I yeah. say. It has my heart. I mean, the U.S. It's home. <laughs> I mean, the U.S. is cool, but I mean, nobody really gonna support me like that if I play for them. Like, you know, I'm not. I know. I, I'm not from there. You know, one hundred percent. I think there's also the element where there is. You said it right. There's a big. It's not just a, a bigger support, but it's a bigger impact in the results of what happens with you with Nigeria versus the results of what happened with the U.S. Because Nigeria is, we can set a new trajectory. Whereas here it's, you know, it's, we're continuing to bound forward, but there's so much happening. It can get diluted within the, the structure. Yeah, they so, do. Yeah, they you know, do. yeah. And you pull, if you're able to pull, we were able to pull the country out into that, that hemisphere, um, into that hemisphere of like top 20, top 15 rugby in the world. Like that one actually can make a ripple effect, and if Nigeria affects culture, that affects international culture. Everything, <laughs> everything. <laughs> we we affect everything. Nigeria, everything. everywhere we affect everything. Look at music, right? What everything? So right. I mean, I think is it could easily we could easily do it. We just got to buy into the plan right now, with Stephen Lewis, and you know, because right now we we got ten weeks to prepare. All the guys that went to Mauritius. Ten weeks to prepare. We're probably going to have some new faces fighting for spots because it's not going to be like what it was. We're going to have like actual guys that place interest. Like, you'd be surprised. <laughs> right. We have, um, you know, Aki Raymond? Of course. I'm Again, a dude who needs to be presenting in this because he's been sideswiped on so many levels. But if you get him on that edge, we know how fast that We know how fast <laughs> that man is. Ridiculous. Well, we we probably just need him to finish games for real. Like he doesn't really got to do much. Like right. we just need him to finish games. We got um, Aye. Yeah, you know him. Him. He could be part of it too. Few guys came out before we left for Mauritius. A lot of guys been placing interest now. So talking about big name guys. So it's it's looking it's looking great because we could put this together. Take a nice team of fourteen down to Zimbabwe. I think we're gonna do great. I agree. I agree. Yeah. So from now until at least September, what is it that you feel you have to do to get yourself prepared? Going, oh, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get stronger. That's one. I'm gonna get fit, real fit. Mm -hmm. Gonna get real fast because I want to be the fastest big guy. I know they got the dude from Kenya. What's his name? The water buffalo. Oh yeah. I gotta, I gotta keep up with him. So you know, that's uh, that's just what it is. Have you been able to do you have you found yourself trying to study a little bit more tape on like Kenya and Zimbabwe? Because those two teams tend to be the uh the tractor for sevens in in um for rugby Afrique. Like the buck yeah. stop if you don't beat Zimbabwe and you don't beat Kenya, you don't continue on uh uh moving forward. I mean, I already watched a lot of film on them. I've yeah. watched I've watched them in the series. Like Zimbabwe, I'm really not too pressed on them just because there's there's um Uganda and there's Madagascar. Yeah. And then Zambia. Yeah, Zambia. Very true. Very true. Yeah, those are those are like top teams. I mean Zimbabwe is gonna be good, not taking that from them, but teams like South Africa, Kenya, Uganda, Zambia, Madagascar, those top five teams, and then Algeria. Yeah, that's another team that might be everybody on <laughs> the way they were playing. They're coming out hard like that again. Yeah, yeah. they are. They're putting a lot of money into that. I could tell they put a lot of money into that team that came down. So yeah. they're probably going to come even harder this time. So we, we got to be ready and prepared for each and every one of them. So. Dude, I love it. I love it. Yo, Freddie, man, bro, it has been so great to be able to really be able to catch this all back up. Yo, tell people where they can find you as per usual. Okay, so uh, you can find me on um, Instagram at Fredogamo, F-R-E-D-G-A-M-O. That's my Instagram handle. And also you could find me on, I don't really use Twitter much, but you can find me on Facebook. All you have to do is just search my name and it pops up. 
Man, that's awesome. That's awesome, bro. And last word of it, what word of wisdom that you want to be left for, for those looking to support Nigeria or for those needing to have an expectation of what to go, go forward on? Um, I would say follow your dreams, hold it, hold it really hard, really hard to your heart. Make sure you pray, keep God first and also give back because that's most important everything you do you're never gonna go with it like you go it's just what it is that comes for everybody so if you don't give back then you just just leaving that on the earth you know amen. so that's most important amen yo freddie thank you so much brother yeah for sure man it was nice talking to you you as well man freddie i want to thank you so much for being on here uh dude it was absolute pleasure and y'all thank you so much for taking the time to listen i know we're back we got a new season falls here summer for me because i'm in brazil uh but you know i'm excited for what we have coming through and of course if you haven't had a chance or this is your first time listening definitely go check out the rest of our stuff we got a nice little list of episodes to back up great information great conversation well worth it and uh you know from some of the gr best and brightest that have been in rugby uh throughout the last decade uh and of course i hope you guys are always always being able to keep front but most importantly i hope that you're happy i hope that you're healthy and i hope that you know that you are highly favored until next time y'all cheers <laughs>